Leading up to September 11th, we're pretty good. The Yankees beat the Red Sox 7-2. A hurricane had just missed the city. So the people of New York were going into work that following morning with the sun out, feeling good, happy, and expecting nothing more than just a smooth selling day. All that was about to change at exactly 8.45 a.m. when a Boeing 767 aircraft holding in total 65 people crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. of the World Trade Center. Nobody, not a single person had a clue as to what was going on. Oh, it's just an accident. They didn't see the tower. All these speculations as to how the accident could have occurred continued to pile up until 18 minutes later, People began to know exactly what was going on. An attack. People were jumping out of buildings. Every single flight around the nation canceled. The whole nation and world watched as two symbols inside the greatest city in human history get brought down by people whose motives were to literally wipe us off the map. As all of this was unfolding, President George Bush was in Sarasota County, Florida, planning to read the pet goat to elementary school students. He literally has no clue that at the other end of the map, that the events unfolding are going to etch a permanent memory in the world and U.S. history and single-handedly define his presidency with the decisions he is going to have to make throughout his two terms as president. The president was informed by White House Chief of Staff Andrew Carr that we were under attack and that a second plane had hit the tower. Think of that. You're the leader of the most powerful nation economically, militarily, financially, and you're told probably a world leader's biggest fear while you're sitting in a room full of children almost 1,000 miles away from D.C. with a third plane heading its direction. When things seemed like they couldn't get any worse, the Pentagon was hit at approximately 9.37 a.m. Things were seeming as if we were inside a movie. 
This left us as a nation on our toes wondering what in the world was next. What people have seen that day hasn't even been close as to what is going to happen next in New York City. Jamie, I need you to stop for a second. There has just been a huge explosion. We can see uh, a billowing smoke rising, and I can't, I'll, I'll tell you that I can't see that second tower. And then it happens again. 20 minutes later, an entire city is covered in smoke. People are dead, dying of suffocation, being evacuated, then out of nowhere, the second tower collapses. Brave men and women went from ordinary citizens trying to help trap people to heroes. It'll be there. Yeah, we want to take our, our viewers live to uh, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Our Brian Cabell is standing by. This, of course, is the site where United Airlines Flight 93 crashed. As the fourth plane was heading towards Washington, the passengers of Flight 93 attacked the hijackers, saving even more lives and taking their own instead and crashing it into a field in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, only 130 miles away from the Capitol building. Our citizens defied their captors by holding a vote. The choice they made would cost them their lives, and they knew it. Many passengers called their loved ones to say goodbye then hung up to perform their final act. One said they're getting ready to break into the cockpit. I have to go. I love you. Another said it's up to us. I think we can do it. In one of the most stirring accounts, Todd Beamer, a father of two with a pregnant wife at home in New Jersey, asked the airphone operator to join him in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Then he helped lead the charge to the front of the plane with the words, let's roll. Since the attacks on the United States and New York, we have seen itself become bigger than what it once was. The Yankees have won five World Series. The Giants have won two Super Bowls. We captured and killed the man behind these attacks, have diminished Al-Qaeda from little to nothing, and most of all, rebuilt yet another World Trade Center known as a Freedom Tower. New York went from shining to dark all in a couple of hours, but also from scared and beaten to hopeful and strong because we looked to the person to our sides and said, we can do this. America today is on bended knee in prayer for the people whose lives were lost here, for the workers who work here, for the families who mourn. This nation stands with the good people of New York City and New Jersey and Connecticut as we mourn the loss of thousands of our citizens. I can hear you!